I just self-medicated because I was just running from whatever I didn't want to face. I've gotten two DUIs. I mean, after 2008 and 2012, that was all I was doing. I, I knew that I had to make a change, because um, if not, it wasn't going to end well. Throughout his career, swimmer Michael Phelps, the most decorated Olympian in history, has found himself in hot water for alcohol and drug use. New trouble for Olympic legend Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps has been arrested again for DUI. Michael Phelps finished serving a three-month suspension handed down by USA Swimming after a picture surfaced showing him inhaling from a marijuana pipe. But now, Phelps is opening up about his history of substance abuse and how his behavior was reflective of a more serious problem he was facing. When did you first realize that you were having mental health issues? Is this something that started when you were young? I mean, I would probably say the first real time I probably noticed it would have potentially been 2004. You were how old then? Uh, 18, 19. It could have been earlier, I don't know. Um, but I think that was my first real, like, I like to say acting out, like going crazy, like just almost like, an, and I probably was like stiff arming people, like giving people the Heisman then. I probably brushed it under the rug and then just got right back into the pool. And what I was doing in the pool would just distract anything else that was going on. So that was probably when I really started just stuffing everything down and not letting it come up because I just, I didn't know what it would do. I didn't know how I would react to dealing with it. And did you ever tell any coaches or parents or anything? I never, never said anything to anybody. I basically just carried it on and tried to handle it myself. Is that because of shame or? No, I mean, I would say it's, it's probably just because I'm an athlete and we're supposed to be, I don't want to say perfect, but we're not supposed to have problems. Phelps spoke out about his battle with depression back in 2016, and since then, he's become an advocate for mental health awareness. I felt like I didn't want to see another day. I felt like it, it should be over. I met up with Phelps in New York City, where he was speaking at a mental health conference for Talkspace, an online therapy platform. Phelps is a Talkspace shareholder and sits on the board as an advisor. Phelps is about to take the stage for a panel, and we're going to go duck in and watch. You know, me being an athlete and having this macho man kind of mentality, like, it's not, it's not how it should be. And it's like, it, it's just frustrating to see that because there are so many people that struggle and we wonder why our suicide rate is up. A new report published by the Centers for Disease Control shows suicide rates in the United States have increased nearly 30% since 1999. And men are four times more likely to die by suicide than women. Experts are calling this the silent epidemic. Why do you think it's so hard, as a man yourself, to, for men to talk about mental health issues? Probably because they don't want to show weakness. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be the, the only thing that I would say. Do you think we need to start talking about men's health like this? I mean, I think if you see really what's happened over the last three to four years with people who have come up and, mm -hmm. and opened up about their struggles, I think now with, with people who have stood up and talked about their struggles, whether it's performers, singers, actors, actresses, or baseball players, basketball players, football players, Olympians, mm -hmm. like all walks of life, and they get to show they're not just some like fictional character, right? Like they're a human being just like everybody else in the world. Athletes have recently called for the United States Olympic Committee, the USOC, to do more in regard to mental health resources. The organization currently provides access to mental health professionals, but athletes are asking for more care, specifically to deal with their post-Olympics transition. What would you want to see from the USOC as far as providing mental health care for athletes? I mean, I'd like to see them actually care about it because they can say that they do, and, and I've never seen anything that shows that they care. And, you know, I've been on the national team for 20 years, like, I haven't seen it once, you know, it's, I mean, I guess in 2016, we had one therapist that traveled with us, but that was the first time I've ever seen it. So, you know, like, I, I just believe that they look too much at the physical 
performance side of things than having us work on our mental space because mm -hmm. that's something that we need to be able to perform and if we're just stuffing things down you know we can see athletes that do struggle I mean Stephen Holcomb took his life and that's something that we could have potentially prevented but nobody was there. In 2017, U.S. bobsledder Stephen Holcomb died after using a combination of alcohol and sleeping pills. Previously, he had been open about his struggle with depression. Do you wish you would have had that help coming up in the sport? Um, it's it's, it's a hard you? question because, you know, I, I, I often think if I did, my career would have been different or could have been different. So that's why I say I wouldn't change anything that I went through because I've, I have the chance to be who I am now. I, I wondered, you know, as a father yourself, what did the advice you would give to your children, you know, if they're encountering mental health issues? I look forward to having the chance to teach them the importance of understanding their own emotions and why they're there and where they come from. I can explain to Boomer and Beckett what I went through and how I dealt with it and, and what I did on a day-to-day -day basis to get better. And more that we're learning as a society about um, something that's so big that, that we can make a serious difference in.